So I'm now heading the futures program. Mm -hmm. I'm having pretty big shoes to fill in. Mm -hmm. So I go for the training at mm -hmm. Oxford. Mm -hmm. I come back and the more I think about what policy issue I could pick and now lead a proper futures exercise as cutting to the program officer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, is, is then uh, is something now I have to do. So all the research begins to point out to the youth bulge and the questions that are not answers about what does this mean for the future of Kenya. Mm. Because then when you begin to, again from that process, the vision process, mm. you begin to realize unemployment is high. We are, chan we are not providing jobs as fast. Mm. So we are not filling in the gap. Mm. So those questions kind of then culminate into this research proposal that I put together. Mm. And the nature of research proposal writing is that you pretty much are hooking mm. on to who's <laughs> they're going to bid, who's going to give you the money mm. to actualize. I call proposal writing, uh, in especially in our field, yeah. I call it the campaign period. Why? It is the campaign it period. Is tough. Yeah, because you're literally, yeah. you have an idea, yeah. you're campaigning, you're buying votes, you're, yeah. you're going to, you're hooking. Yeah, you're hooking this yeah. proposal to yeah. see who will actually buy into yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. And I remember doing endless meetings mm. with different organizations mm. that were funding, beginning to fund mm. programs. Mm. Mm. But somehow I didn't realize at this point that it's not just a good idea that mm. sells that relationships because yeah. you're giving you see this person giving you money is also accountable so right. if they give money the wrong to the wrong person mm -hmm. they need to you need to have a, a trust relationship mm -hmm. so ia had a very good name mm -hmm. still does mm -hmm. and and because of that people had confidence and mm -hmm. that's why i think mm -hmm. there was invitations mm -hmm to come and make these presentations. Mm, mm. But I'm telling you, so my heart was broken many times, many times. because I, I got rejected. I mean, I would have these endless conversations with people, mm. think we have made headway, and mm. then you never hear from them again. Mm. I mean, you have done like five, 10 meetings mm. with them. Mm. And by that, you're like, surely, mm. they must have seen something for mm. them to keep calling me back. Mm. Mm. But none of them materialized. Oh my goodness. It's so interesting you mentioned that yeah. uh, one of the interviews you've done is with Dr. Catherine uh, Kimbutungi mm. of, of APHSC and she mentions um, how right now at APHSC they are having quite a good mm. success rate with, 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 with proposals but, and she mentions three things that are foundational for um, you know business mm -hmm. development. Funders fund three things. They mm -hmm. fund people, yes. they find place mm -hmm. and then they, find, they fund project. Mm. So people is the person applying, yeah, or the team, yeah. Place is the institution, yeah, and then project now is the actual the reason, the science, mm. like um, how imp how convincing and how compelling mm. is the science. So all those three things have to work out mm. together to have a good success rate. Mm. So as at the institutional level, it is how do you build people and how do you build teams, and so having a clear like pathway of building people so that three years five years six years seven years you really have people who are going Attack to be the drivers and oh, you're just alluding to them you yeah. know it's people yeah. <laughs> it's the place yeah. and also it's uh the idea you know yeah, the, 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 the yeah the and it's those things oh, that you're I'm talking about you, yeah it was and so here i am intimidated out of my wits because i have I have a program to deliver. Yeah. And then I need to, part of the success is, will I be able to fundraise? Mm. So incidentally, we get, uh, we get a, a, I get a note from, so I was working, working in this uh, scenarios exercise with Society for International Development. Mm. And so there is a call by Rockefeller Foundation to have a meeting in Italy and so they want, it's a meeting of futurists and they want to discuss, you know, the interface between foresight and I think poverty alleviation. And so I get called in as a, as a futures program officer. It was a wonderful trip. Um, and, and I go to this and I'm meeting futurists who've been practicing since the 60s and 70s. So once again, you sit and it's an a wonderful sort of like um, learning opportunity. You're with, the, let me call it your community of, you know, now your profession. 
And so we do the round of introductions and what each one of us is working on. And I happened to just mention very passionately about, and I didn't actually go out to do that. And, and so I, I mentioned what I'm doing. And the head of uh, the most senior person in Rockefeller in the room calls the office. I didn't even know they had an office here and asks, is a youth problem in Kenya that bad? And then um, Dr. the current governor of Kiambu, the current Dr. Nyoro, doctor, uh, yeah. was, was just taking over. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you have a good proposal on youth in Kenya, oh, please fund it. Mm. And partly because of the issues around youth, in, in, first of all, post-election violence yeah. uh, began to really surface those issues a mm. lot more. Mm. And then um, this issue around, you know, the, the drinking... Drugs and substance abuse. In Kiambu was yeah. a big one. Yeah. So I think on account of those two, I think he was just like, oh, please, please, yeah. fund. Yeah. And it was the first time somebody came to me and said, how much do you need? And and kept insisting, is this enough money? And I'm thinking, Whoa. I'm funding you. Yes. Mm. And it was the first time that I was having this discussion where they're ready to fund without asking to cut down the budget. Mm. And in fact, kept asking. Mm. And so I was funded to do a youth, youth scenarios exercise. And so... What was the value? It was to the tune of thirty thousand mm. dollars. That was a lot. That account. was a lot. It was actually not that. It was about thirty five thousand mm, dollars. Mm, mm. uh, for the size of Rockefeller, that's mm. not much. But yeah. for an IE project, I think that that's that was sizable. one of the big ones. Mm, yeah. mm. So um, we go in, and so from the learnings of the Kenya scenarios exercise, which was really professionals, uh, amazing minds coming together and doing this brilliant piece of work. I, I, I felt like, and then having done the disseminations, I felt like we needed a different approach. And that is to start off with grassroots conversations. And let me not say it was a bottoms up approach, but mm. to start with the grassroots conversations yeah. mm. and then build it upwards. Mm. And so I held, instead of one, one meeting or one, one group consistently discussing, I had regional meetings mm. so i did about eight eight of them based on the former provincial mm. meetings with mm. young people mm. and then um culminated into two two national workshops mm. that then did the actual scenarios combining everything mm. now it was so fascinating how just first of all getting young people to have a conversation about the future of the country i think mm. was a first yeah that's a big deal. So there was such an element mm. of, wow, we've mm. been given an opportunity. Again, you're not mm. doing this with 100 people. Mm. You're doing this with at most 25 people. Mm. Still, it mm. is a milestone. Mm. It was so interesting because we were recording the conversations and in two places are memorable. Mm. In, um, in, in Coast and mm -hmm. in North Hankel, mm -hmm. the anger was palpable. Mm. And the issue was historical injustices mm. and disenfranchisement mm. of youth. It was really Pwanisi Kenya. So pronounced. Mm. Yeah, sorry. Pwanisi Kenya. Pwanisi Kenya was mm. the narrative mm -hmm. of the course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was similar mm. in, 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 in in northern Kenya. Mm. And at one point in the northern Kenya workshop, we mm. had this. At, at some point, the meeting just like we had to step back because. The participants had this very heated argument mm. in the local language mm. and the question became do you want to know why we are arguing mm. and i said of course and they said we are arguing whether we should really just give you the usual uh narrative you know, NGO mm. narrative mm. of what you want to hear or mm. do we have a real conversation mm. so i asked what do you want to do and they said so this one young man said we are even arguing about should we just be real mm. and he says one of the biggest issues is why young people in northern Kenya have become uh, uh, are drawn to terrorism. Mm -hmm. And of course, that draws your attention. Mm -hmm. And he says, I'm actually one of them that just crossed Ooh. over from Somalia. Ooh. And I'm, I've just come from Bari, burying my cousin, who also was with me and died. And I said, why would you? So in my ignorance and in my typical cultural 
you know, framing of things, I'm wondering why would you put yourself in harm's way? So I wasn't being a very good facilitator in letting this be a neutral conversation. And so that provoked something in that young man. And he began saying, he asked me a very challenging question. He said, you're a privileged Kenyan. Um, because of course you're coming from the other side of Kenya, right? And, and he asked me, how do you know how the police tell that we are Kenyan? Honestly, I, I thought an ID at that point. He says, you see, because you belong to the mainstream, you know, the, 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 the in-group, you don't know what the out-group goes through. And so he said, of course, the BCG vaccination, and that has the nomadic dynamics so that you may not get. Mm. In fact, chances are that you are not born mm. Mm. in a in a facility. Mm. So um, so chances are that for immunization are very low. Yeah. yeah? Mm. And then um, chances are that by the time certain things are happening, you're also shifting because of pasture. Mm. Mm. And he says, and because we are Kushitic, obviously mm. the, the texture of our hair mm. is different from yours. Mm. And so we constantly have to, you know, justify our identity mm. to you. Mm. So to you means you're lumped up with the police mm. and all those people mm. that are, mm. in a sense, the object mm. of of, um, mm. of of this, you know, um, disadvantage. Mm. And and you could see the anger. Mm. And then we did talk about female genital mutilation. Mm. And this is the first time I came close to how what some women go through. Mm. You know, when when a girl, one of the participants said she her parents left her mm. in the home and she was the narrative she was going is that she was going to stay with her aunt mm. and her aunt was now the one to facilitate the circumcision and it was gonna be you know the 90 percent cut Whoa. and she recounted mm. how difficult it was God. and and we went into these conversations about you know male female relationships mm. and how in fact, now it was the young men saying mm. we don't even want our girls to be circumcised mm. because it brings other dynamics mm. um, later on. Mm. And it was the first time I was hearing this in the rawest form mm. possible. Mm. And this young man says to me, mm. you know why terrorism is very attractive to us? Because you take it as why would you in your right mind go to get bombed or to bomb other people? Mm. He says, what if I told you that out of the desperation that we have, mm -hmm. it's a form of giving us identity. You have a sense oh. of belonging because you come into a fold of brotherhood. Mm. And then he mm. said, it's also a sense of duty mm. that as a human being and as a young man, mm. it is it is not, you're not complete without a mission. Mm. And the system has made sure that mm. that is taken away from us. Mm. And so you have someone welcoming you constantly mm. and mm. giving you a mission to mm. die for. Mm. Are you listening to when how deep that, that is? Yeah, yeah. And then lastly, you're living for a promise mm. that it's, this is not in vain. Yeah. You see? Yeah. There, there's something bigger. bigger. And, oh. and it occurred to me right there that even the some way, of this you can't quite change like that yeah and mm. the way we design mm. the way we have these conversations first of all mm. entrenches mm. those disadvantages because yes. perhaps we are in the privileged yeah. group yeah and now getting an id mm. we are not empathetic yeah to these circumstances Situations, yeah mm. and so it became a rally mm. this work became a rallying mm. call mm. to address some of those things mm. and to surface those things very in powerful. that growest mm. form mm. and then um I, it occurred to me now later in life mm. i i have picked up this issue of unemployment mm. as mm. a call mm. and i'm actually i've been researching on it for a while now mm. just yesterday i was editing a paper mm. on this issue around inequality mm -hmm. and the issue of uh, young people and access to employment mm. because it's deeper than getting jobs mm. we don't make a connection and a lot of the policy discussions we have mm. just is about to give young people something to mm. do but from that young man's point of view mm. we have to design it to be a lifelong calling yeah. it's the only way it can be meaningful to yeah. young people yeah. It has they to need give to them connect. dignity. Yeah, they it have to. It has to give them a promise for a better future. Yeah. And when you now then begin to throw all manner of mm. opportunities here, just so mm. that you want to record numbers, mm. Mm. then it's not yeah. com 
compatible. Yeah, yeah. And that that really was yeah. that really yeah. spoke to me. Yeah, politicians and aspirants and business people, corporates yeah. and. Uh, people in development all should hear yeah. this kind of message yes yeah. and and now then doing it in the coast mm. the anger there mm -hmm. it was quelled mm. we did, in fact w what we did is that we had um we recognized i mm -hmm. think having worked in research and policy mm -hmm. one of the connections i made early is that our policy work wasn't being as impactful as it should mm -hmm. despite the brilliant papers because mm -hmm. they're not cascading you see that the organization is meant mm. to inform policy and policy was at members of level. parliament yeah. and you know at that top level yeah. mm. but you realize that if, if you take this information to a community group it is correct and 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 you simplify it yeah. it becomes another powerful way to have advocacy from bottom up yeah and so in the futures program mm -hmm. i really created those two linkages mm. that um and, and, and obviously it was a bit of an institutional culture mm. but uh, a culture shift mm. but um, so in like the futures program when, when cbf came mm -hmm. we started doing work with constituencies mm. to do strategic planning as a foresight exercise strategic planning with the community with members. With constituency members. Yeah. So that we do constituency oh, strategic powerful. plans. Mm. We were one of the first people to actually mm. introduce strategic planning mm. in constituencies. Mm. Mm. And now we... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's... One of the publications I did at IU was a guide on mm. how to do a constituency strategic mm. plan, mm. which I hope has informed the mm. county mm. integrated strategic planning. Plan, yeah. mm. You know, mm. and, and that's powerful mm. because now IU started, mm. not started, but mm. in increasingly mm. started taking a lot through the budget program as mm. well mm. started taking a lot of these budget processes mm. with the new constitution mm. to counties yeah. and it became a very powerful way to enhance mm. participation mm. which is um, mandated mm. in the constitution mm. Mm. so in in this work then um so we had one one of, part of that simplification of these very hard messages mm -hmm was doing it in illustration forms. Mm. So I did, I got a cartoonist mm. on board, actually he works for Nation Media. Mm. And we we started illustrating a lot of these things. Mm. So in course, the, the very powerful imagery mm. was he drew a cow. To summarize, the whole conversation <laughs> was a cow feeding in Coast Province. Mm. So he has a map of Kenya mm. and the cow mm. feeding in Coast Province, mm. but being milked in Kenya. Oh. And that summarizes the anger yeah. and the anguish of unemployment in the coast, right? Mm. Alongside the historical mm. injustices. Mm. Mm. In, 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 uh, and in Northern Kenya, mm -hmm. the, the, the narrative was, mm. if we had, if Somalia was peaceful, mm. we would actually secede. Whoa. Which was another message that was from the coast. Yeah. And so this cartoonist brilliantly did a map of Kenya and did a cartoon yanking mm. out northern province mm. and coast province mm. and now our message mm. one of our messages was this mm. is kenya in 2030. Mm. these are youth voices bringing these about these voices these messages it was powerful very powerful very so powerful. then in in terms of documenting those mm -hmm. conversations mm -hmm. one of the things then i recognized is that there isn't actually one a one-stop shop mm. for youth data mm. it's all over the place mm. And so, again, having worked at the Institute of Economic Affairs and seen the power of mm -hmm. data, mm -hmm. we put together a youth factbook. Mm -hmm. And that was the first publication we launched with mm -hmm. this work. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how powerful it was mm -hmm. until just uh, later on, I s I've seen so many references mm -hmm. to that work in other mm -hmm. sort of like researches. Mm -hmm. We have evidence that mm -hmm. it did inform a lot of government sort of like allocation or increases mm, mm. in, in, in um, allocating more resources to the youth ministry. Mm. I met, pe I would meet people in the supermarket and says, are you the one who wrote this book? I, we are I, using I, it. Are you cutting your youth <laughs> fact book? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We are using it for, yeah. pro universities actually started, yeah. I know at least two, yeah. that started youth programs. Mm, based on the youth fact book. Based on the youth fact yeah. book. And so, what did this entail? Just facts and figures mm, mm, on youth in Kenya. Mm, so you had, I mean, anything on youth in mm, Kenya, you mm, had this one book mm, that documents health, education, health, education, uh, livelihoods. Health was, an, was there health? Yes, there was mm, health. Mm, health, education, demographics, mm, uh, technology, mm, um, mm, stuff, mm, uh, employment. Mm, and so you, and, and you looking at that fact book, you are able to actually see where the issues are mm, mm, and what the policy concerns mm, should be for mm, anyone mm, working on youth issues. Yeah. And so it was very valuable. Has there been another? That was in twenty 
10. 10. Has there been another one released since? I actually, after, uh, in 2014, Youth Agenda asked me to do a sequel. Mm -hmm. and so it was really, the idea was to do the same, but mm -hmm. it didn't get as much traction. Okay, as, as the previous this one. First one. Okay, yes. all right. And, uh, but there's not a third one? Or... No, there, I don't, not to my recollection. Okay, all not right. To my recollection. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then now we did the, so the scenarios exercise, mm -hmm brought in the stories mm. of young people on where they think Kenya should be going. Mm, mm. And the picture was green. Mm. So we presented this to policymakers mm. and, you know, people in decision-making spaces. Mm. I'm telling you, they couldn't handle it. Mm. They couldn't handle how green the picture was. Mm. In one of the videos, it says Kenya was born in 1964 and it died. That's how much uh, they were unhopeful about so Kenya. When... In one of the scenarios. So the scenarios followed water bodies. Yeah, let's let so, let's 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 hear about the scenarios mm -hmm. and 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 how they even come up and why you even choose to use water an bodies analogy, and an and an analogy yeah. and why an analogy yeah. and, and and stuff like that. And if you'd like to take a bit of water break, you can. No, You're good. All I'm right. Fine. Okay. As you can tell, I'm very passionate. About You're very passionate work. about it. It's, it's mm -hmm. a very hot room we are recording from. So, yeah. uh, no, I'm fine. all right. If you're fine, it's good. So, um,